in this video we are going to talk about plasmodium species plasmodium species are known to cause malaria right so plasmodium belong to phylum apicomplex class sporozoa right and in this same class you also find toxoplasma gondi which we are going to talk about next let's focus on plasmodium species right so uh, each plasmodium has two distinct hosts right the first one is a vertebrate such as a human uh, where asexual reproduction takes place also known as schizogony right uh, it takes place specifically in the liver it will be the hepatic phase and uh, red blood cells it will be the erythrocytic phase i will talk about this in the life cycle right the second host is an arthropod is specifically female anopheles mosquito and this is where gametogenic uh, phase or sexual reproduction take place and also sporogony Plasmodium species cause diseases by various mechanisms include metabolism of hemoglobin and lysis or lysis of infected cells leading to anemia and agglutination of infected red blood cells. They cause paroxysms like chills, fever spikes and malarial rigors when infected red blood cells are lysed liberating a new crop of merozoids right so uh whenever the rbc is best body temperature will go up people with uh, sickle cell anemia have selective protection against plasmodium falciparum but some texts just suggest that it's malaria in general all of them right and also there are death blood group antigens which are uh, which have receptors for plasmodium vivax plasmodium vivax right so uh next let's talk about a transmission i told you is uh transmitted by female anopheles mosquito and this is a life cycle right so uh let's start at this stage where a mosquito will bite you right and when it bite it releases the sporozoids these sporozoids will uh, enter the hepatic cells. This is the hepatic phase, right? Some of the uh, uh, species, specifically vivax and ovale, will, will undergo like hypnosis. They lie to amend. It's called hypnozoid, right? And when the time comes, they can uh, go back to the cycle, right? But others who can just go straight from these uh, uh, sporozoids and then they will mature into uh, uh, schizons in the liver and burst. On bursting, they release merozoids, but this is not where fever takes place. Let's go to the next. When these merozoids enter the red blood cell or erythrocyte this is called the erythrocytic phase right so uh, there will be uh, tropnozoids inside here maturing uh, this one is an erythrocytic schizond you have merozoids all over here so on rupturing at this stage that's where fever um, or blood uh, body temperature goes up right so these um, uh, merozoids released here can infect other red blood cells bursting uh, and then uh, infecting other red blood cells again bursting uh, right until in severe stages you can actually have anemia right okay i will talk to you more about that later but here is uh, what's very important some of the merozoids will transform into um gametes right so you can see the female gametes the female gamete is big it's called a macrogamete and the male is small it's called microgamete right so these final cells are called a gametocytes right so when the mosquito come and bite an infected person they will take these gametocytes and you can see the micro and macrogamete fusing to form a zygote and then all kind of in the midguard of the mosquito and then it will move up like as an oocyst and then uh, this cyst will burst releasing the sporozoids in the salivary gland and then the mosquito goes to the next victim 
right so this is sporozoids are infective stage for humans and these gametocytes are infective stage for what for the mosquito right okay right so let's talk about malaria the disease right so uh, the symptoms include fever headache anemia as i told you uh enlargement of the spleen splenomegaly and in severe cases there can be a hypoglycemia or low blood sugar right so as i mentioned earlier on there are different kinds of um um plasmodium species right here i'm going to group vivax and uh ovale right so they are actually a little similar right and then next will be plasmodium falciparum and plasmodium malaria right so let's talk about uh plasmodium vivax and ovale right so these will have a 48 hour cycle it's called a tertian fever and it includes includes fever on the first day and third day right it means the fevers are actually 48 hours apart and vivax and oval as i mentioned earlier on they have the ability to lie dormant in the hepatocytes forming these hypnozoids next will be plasmodium falciparum this is very dangerous and severe it causes irregular fever patterns and parasitized red blood cells who occlude in capillaries in the brain this is cerebral malaria is very dangerous and they can also uh, occlude in the capillaries of kidneys and lungs right but this one cerebral malaria is very dangerous it can actually kill the person very fast plasmodium malaria this one it causes like a 72 um cycle fever right so this one is called a quassian fever right quassian fever okay next diagnosis of malaria right so we draw blood and then a blood smear in the uh, the smear we can see the trophozoid ring form within the red blood cell as you can see here right these are the ring forms okay uh, we can also see a schizon containing merozoids or red granules this is called uh skufna steeping throughout the red blood cells and is specifically for vivax and ovale right as you can see here on this slide all right so this is just a basic summary of uh like uh what happens in the what uh uh, on the blood smear right so if you look for plasmodium vivax you will see enlarged host cells uh amoeboid trophozoids for plasmodium ovale you see oval jagged infected red blood cells for plasmodium malaria you see bar and bend forms roset schizons in plasmodium falciparum you see multiple ring forms crescent shaped gametes right so here you can see a mixed infection of both plasmodium malaria here you can see a, a, a growing trophozoids here and here you can see this is plasmodium falciparum thus gametocytes right treatment of malaria right why do we really treat malaria right so the treatment should be suppressive to avoid infection it should be therapeutic to eliminate the erythrocytic uh, phase and then it will be um, radical cure to eliminate hypnozoids gametocidal that's for destruction of gametocytes right so a successful treatment is accomplished with chloroquine followed by primaquine right so chloroquine uh, chloroquine therapy is suppressive therapeutic and gametocidal whereas primaquine eliminates the exo erythrocytic form right so chloroquine is actually for sensitive species some have developed resistance right so if they is resistant you use mefloquine atovacone and proguanil if life-threatening you use intravenous quinidine artesanate and here you should also test for uh, glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency and in plasmodium uh, 
uh, ovale and vivax you add prima queen for hypnozoid right and again test for glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase thank you so much if you like this video please make sure you give it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe